them. Forgive our interrupting thus, but there's a little matter to discuss. Your presence, sirs, is lucky happenstance. This matter affects you as well, by chance. I'm only here because my arm was twisted. I didn't want to, but these men insisted. They came to me aggrieved and all upset about the lowest thing I've heard of yet. And knowing of your virtue and good grace, I do not accept that you could be so base. No matter how the proof might indicate, I've set aside our differences of late to back you up in these considerations and see you clear yourself of accusation. Yes, madam. All of us would like to see just how calm and resourceful you might be. Katandra got this note from you last week. And to a cast, you have this sharp critique. The script, you see, comes from familiar source, considering her breadth of intercourse. I fear to several friends such letters go, but wait, sirs, this is something you should know. You tax my idle friendships and have seized upon the notion that I am more pleased when you are absent than when you are around. Your argument, sir, stands on shaky ground, and I demand a quick apology, or you'll get no forgiveness here from me. Our bumbling friend, the Viscount, you so fear, oh, it's a shame the fellow's not around to hear. Our bumbling friend, whom you allude to first, can bore me sometimes till I'm fit to burst. And since the day I saw him spend his power by standing at the well almost an hour, depositing small wiglets of spit to contemplate the circles made by it, I have a thought so very highly of him and hardly, as you know, to think to love him. And for the next you list the small marquee, I do believe, good gentlemen, that's me, who yesterday sat squeezing at my hand. Well, I can think of no one in the land who's quite as insignificant or small. The only value thing of him at all are his good sword and his unfailing cape, which helps at least to mitigate his shape. And now the man whose ribbons are in green it's you now, sir, the lady seems to me. His bluntness may amuse me, I confess, but otherwise... He can be quite a pest. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is our friend, the sonneteer. She's speaking of your talent, sir. I fear. <laughs> the sonneteer has got it in his head that he should write what never should be read. <laughs> he transcribes every little thing he knows. His verse is quite as wretched as his prose. So no, my entertainment's much more poor than it would be if you might visit more. In fact, my spirits have severely flagged for all the parties to which I've been dragged. Such festive nights are not so greatly treasured when not shared with the one with whom I'm pleasured. And now for me. You mention your Clitandra. His honeyed speeches make me feel no fonder. I flee from him as I might an infection, so far as he from stirring my Affection. In thinking that he's loved, he's as absurd as you for not believing in my word. Please treat with him the premises you hold, and promise me that you will make more bold in coming on tactics, my dear cure, for all the other visits I endure. It's quite a portrait that these letters frame, and for such congress you know there's a name! Enough! We'll make no both near and far what um, Tender character you are. Yes, madam, I'll not waste my time on such commotions. I'll spare my insignificant emotions for those more honest loves, which you may see might squeeze the little hand of this marquee. So! After all the love you so expressed, you plunged this dagger deep within my breast. 
your mom Savannah, which has been unfurled, to welcome every wanderer of the world. How long I've been so stupid and so blind. I thank you for enlightening my mind. My heart's my own, and that new resolution will be a very special retribution. She's yours, sir, and may you have plenty of her. That is, if you can find a way to love her. No longer can I keep respectful silence, not after I have observed the dreadful violence which you performed upon these men. I am shocked at just how these fine men have been so mocked. Forgetting all the others here, our sex, the finest man our city has possessed lays down his heart based on your wicked blood. I thank you, madam. That will be enough. I ask you not concerned about my health, and leave me, please, to fight my wars myself. For while I might feel some small gratitude, my heart does not feel quite the latitude to repay your concern for how I'm used. As you not be the alternate, I choose. Oh, how dare you, sir, assume that I should care to pick up after this most base affair? You must think quite a bit of your own merit to think that every lady wants to snare it. Your vain imagination weaves great weavings to so suppose I want this lady's leavings. I hate to burst your most deluded bubble, but I think you hardly worth the trouble. Stay here with her, and me this hussy's lover. You two are simply perfect for each other! Ha! <laughs> And if you hate 